Sharma. Uh, Sujit Panigrahi, sir, is the founder and the CEO of Secure Fitness and Sports Technology, Fitness 365. He has over 23 years in sports technology, analytic, and sports education. His company, Fitness 365, is India's largest fitness assessment company. Fitness 365 manages Kelo India Fitness Assessment for school-going children, Fit India Initiatives, and Swast Bachche Swast Bharat Program of Kendra Vidyalaya Sangathan. Fitness 365 helps build active schools through structured, round-the-year, inclusive sports, health and physical education, top of pyramid, sports coaching, and the national fitness program. Sujit Panigrahi is governing council member at the Sports Skill Council India and a member of the CBSE and NCRT curriculum committees. He was the additional director general technology for CWG Delhi 2010 and has worked for Atlanta Olympics and ESPN Star Sports. He's a graduate and postgraduate from BI Bits Pulani. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Do you want me to start the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so at the outset, I would like to place my gratitude to GPSC, especially Rupa ma'am, uh, Chairperson ma'am, uh, Charu ma'am, Alka ma'am, all the founding members, executive board, and all the school leaders who are here, directors and principals. Uh, so uh, without taking much time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the presentation. Yeah, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, so today's topic is integration of sports with academic subjects. Uh, so here, what we're going to do is that let's take a look at uh, when a child actually goes to school, what happens? Uh, essentially, uh, so when I look at, I have two children. So when they actually, uh, they, they get up in the morning, get ready. So they, no one says that they're going to a class. So ch the children actually go to a school to learn. So essentially every single, the moment they enter the gate, the entire space is a learning space for them. Essentially what you're looking at, if you look at a classroom, classroom is a small part of the entire learning process. Especially during COVID-19, when we're looking at children, we see that they are actually losing out on their social and eco emotional uh, learning skills. The reason being that they are not able to meet their friends, they are not able to interact with teachers, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with everyone else. So what we're looking at is that how, so when you're looking at the entire school as a learning space, so it's essentially the school, the corridors, the, the building itself, the playgrounds, and every, every single space that we're looking at. So we are essentially looking at education within the classroom, education on, on the play field. Let's look at a little video. Uh, and this is a very popular movie from Hitchkey. So I'm just play, uh, going to play a small uh, video and then we get into the. Uh, so you could see that, uh, so the lesson for uh, from this video is that life is not subject wise. Essentially when I uh, passed out from a CBSE school, uh, so we used to have very large playgrounds. I wanted to do something in sports, but again, I mean, as parents, parents would basically want you to become an engineer. They want you to become a medic, uh, either become a doctor or an architect. So essentially, uh, there are three streams that we typically talk about, whether it is science, commerce, or humanities. And then uh, there are small, small uh, areas that parents are actually comfortable about. They are okay if the child actually goes and becomes an architect, or they are okay if someone becomes a chartered accountant, and few other things. Uh, but if you look at if you look at uh, in real life, whatever we learn in school, uh, any subject that we look at, whether it is science, social science, English, mathematics, Hindi, uh, when we actually start applying it to real life situation, it's a, it's a combination of all of that. So here, uh, so NEP 2020 has been a blessing in this guys. So here, uh, so as uh, MHRD or CBSE or the school boards, they are all looking at. How, how do we create a framework where we can actually somehow balance, uh, let's say, academic, sports, vocational skills and create pathways for children? One thing for sure that we are doing well in, uh, let's say, math, in engineering or we become good doctors because uh, we uh, spend 
at least one class, one period every day on mathematics, science, social science, and other subjects. Whereas when it comes to physical education and sports, we don't allocate that much of time. So essentially, if we can actually have one period per day for social, for sports, what is going to happen is that we'll have higher level of participation. Higher participation in interest area will lead to higher excellence. So what we're looking at is that when children get into their middle classes, six to eight, they would have actually experienced about just about everything. They, would, they can actually develop some interest and because of that, they can actually specialize on different uh, in different areas. Uh, one thing for sure, when you actually play a sport, you actually develop uh, life skills, things like uh, respect, or uh, you learn how to deal with failure, you learn how to deal with success, you become, you learn social skills, you learn how about teamwork, you learn about excellence. There's a lot of physical skills that you develop. You develop a lot of life skills also. Similarly, the cognitive skills, I mean, uh, it is it is said that if you actually play for 20 minutes, that's going to improve concentration by at least one and a half to two hours. So cognitive skills, again, very important. Uh, so we talked about social and emotional skills. That's It is going to help in development of all of that. The next thing is identification of areas of interest or talent. So when children move from class 9 to 12, if someone would have developed interest in academics, they can get into academics. Someone develops interest in sports, they can get into those. Or it could be a combination of that. As an example, that I'm an engineer, but right now I work in the area of sports and sports technology. So sports science, sports technology, there are huge sports broadcasting. There are a lot of opportunities which are there in sports. This is NEP, uh, NEP led sports integrated activities we are looking at. So here, uh, instead of a 10 plus 2 structure, we have 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. So here, uh, there's a lot of focus around uh, playful learning. There's a lot of focus around discovery and activity-based and interactive class learning. Experiential learning in all the subjects we are looking at in middle stage. Secondary stage, we're looking at multidisciplinary approaches. So can I, can I mix my uh, skills in, let's say, fine arts with science? If I'm good in engineering graphics, can I actually do it with science and mathematics? Or if I'm good in uh, sports and also good in uh, speaking skills, can I become a commentator? So we are looking at uh, mixing all the skills. So uh, let's look at the physical education learning outcomes for the three main outcomes which are there. The first outcome is fitness and active lifestyle for all children. So here we are looking at giving emphasis on physical literacy and participation of every child through modified games, sports, and different kinds of physical activity, ir irrespective of the classes. So fitness for all, social skills and joyful learning, those are the key outcomes. Uh, those children who are good in sports, the idea is to introduce them to a variety of sports. So the idea is that a child should be getting into athletics, they should be getting into uh, some team games, some individual games, some uh, traditional games, so that they develop some interest. So I have two children, one has interest in tennis, the other one has interest in football, uh, even though we put them through similar, uh, similar sports programs. Sporting excellence pathway, there will there'll always be some children who are good in sports. So any PE program should have a sporting excellence pathway as well. While we are focusing on all children, there should be a separate pathway for sporting excellence also. Similarly, like uh, some children are good in mathematics, so you always have programs where they can get into developing, uh, they get into careers in mathematics or science. This is a typical structure. Uh, essentially, when a child is born, zero to two years, they are at home. The skills that you learn are around sitting, crawling, and walking. Uh, from two to seven years, the skills that you learn are around locomotor skills, basically about uh, running, jumping, hopping, skipping, anything that you don't need equipment. That's a locomotor skill, so you can do on your own. Second is manipulative skills, where we're looking at uh, you have a bat and a ball. So you're uh, catching, throwing, uh, striking, kicking, dribbling are all skills where you have manipulative skills. Third is the stability skills. Here we are looking at balance and stability. That's a formative years from nine to ten, seven to 10 is where you start developing those skills into sporting skills. Like as an example, I could have a game called running like a snake, but when I get into seven to 10, I, I uh, do that with a ball. So then I start doing the dribbling skill. Instead of just running uh, like a snake, I can actually use a ball, whether it's a basketball or football. Uh, if I do it with cricket, it's running between the wickets. So it's transitioning the skills that you have learned. Then you also start developing skills on athletics, swimming, gymnastics, team, and individual limit. 11 to 14 is the middle school where we are looking at playing a variety of individual and team sports. 
So Olympic traditional games and recreational games are the structure that we need to do. The reason I'm talking about all this is that when you are starting to integrate as subject teachers, we should know what is the PE outcome also. So 11 to 14, then you also start developing the fitness components, which are the Kelondia components, speed, strength, endurance, cardiovascular endurance and stuff like that, yoga, and then uh, mass engagement, whether it is mass PT, aerobics, all of that. Health and nutrition, children uh, from classes, from six onward, they would understand. Outdoor education is very important because that's where you start doing a lot of bonding. And we and the environment is very important that we should be responsible for. As an example, jogging is a great example. Where we are doing jogging along with picking up the litter. So that's an activity that you do where you're cleaning the environment and you are or orienting also. 14 to 18 is basically class 9 to 12 where you have two part, uh, recreational participation in at least two individual or team sports for everyone. Some children will start specializing sports and some will have sporting excellence pathway. So that's the basic structure. Uh, so essentially what you're saying is that when you're teaching, uh, can we make our mathematics classes or science classes, social science, a lot of children, uh, uh, like as an example, uh, if I talk about myself, history was something that I didn't find very interesting. Someone else may not find chemistry interesting. Someone else may find may not find mathematics interesting. Can we make them interesting by having it holistic, integrated? What are, the poss what are the possibilities of integration? So here uh, we have possibilities where we can actually take off almost 20 to 50% of subjects and be integrated with another subject so that, so that we can ensure 60 minutes of play. Uh, so uh, sports is something that we can integrate with all these subjects. Uh, so integration of sports and physical education in science, mathematics, social science, we'll take some sample examples. I'm taking class six to eight. Where, uh, so we have a platform also called nep.goforfit.in. Here, let's take some example. So there's a story in Hindi called Baski Yatra, Brastachar Ka Attack. Here, it is all about, uh, it's, it's a lot of learning around value. Here, uh, we can actually do that through a simple game. Uh, here, uh, we are learning about, so what are the learning outcomes? One learning outcome has to be uh, the subject itself. Second, uh, here in the, in the subject, we need to have the values of integrity and respect. The second uh, learning outcome is around sports. And the third learning outcome is around fitness. Fourth could be around life skills. So these are the typical learning outcome when you start integrating uh, subjects with uh, physical activity. Here, it's a very simple example where uh, you actually give a rugby ball to two teams and you divide the team. You tell them some very basic, uh, basic uh, rules. Uh, where we say that if the ball actually touches the other side, then it's a, you get a touchdown a point. If the ball goes to the side, then the other team actually gets a chance. And you can only take one step at a time when you're passing the ball. You just uh, catch the ball, you do one step, and then you pass the ball to your teammate. Basic rule. And then you tell them that don't. Uh, we are telling you the rule. Uh, but there are going to be no referees or no umpire out here. So you have to, you have to enforce the rule yourself. What happens is teams, when they start playing, they start uh, pushing and also uh, they say that they have this point. Even if, even if it's a foul, they still uh, push for a point. So they, uh, also they have the half time, then the team changes. So at the end, when you, when you start talking to the team, one thing they would have experienced rugby for the first time, the teams. The second thing is that they would basically say that they would have, uh, they actually they wanted those points because they wanted to win. They say that we wanted to win. That's why uh, So when you ask them very specific instances, as in whether that was the right point or the wrong point, many of them would say that we wanted to win. That's why you did it. So we say, then we can ask them, uh, if you continuously doing that, what will happen? Then they start, then they would say that you would start losing respect. So then, you, then you talk about fair play. You can talk about integrity. So essentially, this is a game where there are no referees. It's about two teams and playing. And this is what happens also. Gali may be jam kelte. That's where uh, the teams start fighting for points. Here, uh, so this is a through this. We tell the story of the uh, st story and also also the values that actually get. Thing. Another example, English story, a different kind of school. I just got this recorded uh, two days back in Chandigarh. Uh, so here again, so you have uh, the school you divide into two parts. One is a partner. One is uh, one set of children are blind. The other set of children are 
uh, able children, the normal children. So the able partner is supposed to help the blind child to go to the other side, fetch some objects and come back. Here you cannot hold the hand. You can only uh, you can only guide, saying that uh, turn to the left and uh, turn to the right, go straight, pick up the thing. So here, what happens is then you children actually start developing empathy. Uh, so as so instead of teaching in the class, you do it in the ground, uh, where uh, children actually start developing empathy. And even those who are blind, the children who are blind, you talk to them. They would say that if uh, if one of the senses is not there. How difficult it is! So they start appreciating, uh, appreciating uh, the, the sense that you have. So whether it is input D, so uh, so this is this is something which is a very simple game, uh, and you could actually improvise on uh, on doing various things. Whether it is crossing obstacles or picking up something, we hear a different kind of school English story uh, done through a game. Example: four uh, hundred meter circuit race. Here we are talking about electricity and circuit. So uh, this we can do it. Let's say through a relay race, 400 meter relay race. So you have 32 or 32 students getting engaged at one go. Uh, so you have eight lanes, four uh, like you do normal relay race. Do a normal uh, typical 400 meter relay race. And after that, when you start talking to them, so what what is electricity and circuit? So you need you need wire. You need conductors, right? So each lane is like a conductor. conductor. So the, chil uh, the children in each lane could be different uh, material for which electricity is passing. The baton is like an electron because typically when you, when you are talking about electricity, uh, electron that moves from one end to the other point, you learn that the current actually flows from positive to negative outside the battery and inside the battery it's from negative to positive. So when you come back and finish the race, it's like completing the entire circuit. So you learn about the concept of electron, you learn about the concept of uh, the different uh, teams will reach at different points of time, and that is what happens through conductors also. Different materials actually, uh, the current flows uh, uh, differently in different materials. So you learn you learn that concept. Uh, switch. So instead of switch, you basically have a whistle or a clapping board, clapper. So that's like a switch. So you have a switch, you have conducting material, you have baton, which is like electron. So the, you learn about all of this. You learn about Registers. Basically, if you add more and more hurdles to it, the hurdles are like registers. So the concept of registers, the concept of baton, you learn through all of that. Uh, you learn about uh, resistivity. You learn about uh, conductors. Uh, this is an example. This is a video that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is about phosphoric flop. How in the early 1960s, Dick Fosbury tried his hand at almost every sport, but never excelled at anything until, at the age of 16, he turned to the high jump. But when he couldn't compete against the strong athletes at his college, using the standard high jump techniques of the time, Fosbury tried to jump a different way, backwards. Instead of jumping with his face towards the bar, bringing each leg over in the traditional straddle method, he jumped with his back towards the bar. Fosbury improved his record by over half a foot and left his coaches amazed by this strange new style of high jumping. During the next few years, Fosbury perfected his high jump style, won the U.S. national trials, and assured his place in the 1968 Olympics in Mexico. In the Olympic Games, Fosbury amazed the world with his new technique, winning a gold medal with an Olympic record leap of 2.24 meters. By the next Olympic Games, almost all the competing high jumpers had adopted what came to be known as the Fosbury flop. What's the secret behind the technique? It lies in a physics concept called the center of mass. For every object, we can locate the average position of all of its mass by taking into account how the mass is spread around the object. For instance, the center of mass of a flat rectangular object of uniform density will be in the intersection of both diagonals, in equal distance from each corner. We can find the center of mass for other objects by similar calculations, or by finding the object's balancing point, which lies right underneath its center of mass. Try balancing a broom by holding it and slowly bringing your hands together until they meet. This balancing point lies right underneath the broom's center of mass. We humans also have a center of mass. When most people stand up, their center of mass is around the belly. But what happens to your center of mass when you lift your hands in the air? Your center of mass moves upwards. It moves all the time as you move through the day, based on how your body is positioned. 
it can even move outside of your body. When you bend forward, your center of mass is located below your bent belly, in a place where there is no mass at all. Weird to think about, but that's the average position of all your mass. Many objects' center of mass are outside their bodies. Think of donuts or boomerangs. Now look at the Fosbury flop and follow the position of the center of mass of the jumper. The jumper runs very fast, so he can divert his horizontal velocity to vertical velocity and jumps. Wait for it. There. Look at the jumper's center of mass as his body bends backward. It's below the bar. That is the secret behind the jump. With the old pre-Fosbury techniques, the jumper had to apply enough force to lift his center of mass above the bar by a few inches in order to clear it. The Fosbury flopper doesn't have to do that. The genius of the Fosbury flop is that the jumper can apply the same amount of force but raise his body much higher than before. That means he can raise the bar so high that even when his center of mass can't go any higher, his arcing body can. Fosbury's technique brought the high jump to new heights by splitting the jumper's body away from his center of mass, giving it that much more room to clear higher and higher bars. So the Fosbury flop may be sports history's only great leap forward that is also a great leap backward. So this is an example where uh, uh, physics actually helps in terms of improving uh, sporting performance. In fact, even in case of Neeraj Chopra, uh, for, uh, for someone to throw a javelin to the maximum distance, typically you have to throw it at 45 degrees and of course with the force. But because you have a height, then the angle uh, should not be 45 degrees, it should be slightly lesser than that for you to attain the maximum distance. So the German coach, who was a sports science specialist, actually helped in terms of uh, correcting that, uh, uh, that uh, technique. So here, uh, this is an example, very difficult history concept called Rebel of 1857. Can we have Rebel of 87 through a game of sports? Here, uh, it's like dividing two teams into East India Company and the Dream Glory, which is fighting for uh, glory. That's the India team. Dream Glory could have members from Mangal Pandey to Bahadur Sajafar, uh, Rani Jhansi, um, Mindars, Tatia Tope, and all of them. And the East India Company basically has uh, East India Company has all the governors. And so here, uh, typically, what happens is that a team glory cannot take a member back because that was a policy of collapse. That if you if the king did not have a natural son, the kingdom will get annexed to British, uh, which uh, which is how uh, Rani Jhansi actually fought also. So here, uh, whereas the East India Company can keep adding members back to back, whereas the team glory cannot add a member. So all the rules were against team glory and here the team East India Company can make their own rules and in case of foul it is anyway referred to external referee again British Parliament who will, which is chosen by the East India Company. Here when you actually start playing a, a game of Kabaddi uh, in all likelihood team glory is going to lose round one and round two you switch the teams the team which was East India Company becomes team glory and this thing so when you start appreciating uh, how if you have one-sided rules how it actually impacts and later if you have time in the p period you actually have a third a third round where the rules are all equal for both sides and that becomes like a more of a fair thing that's what india was fighting for so essentially a game of uh, 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 rebel of 1857 you can actually start appreciating if you start playing a simple game of kabaddi uh, again another example of geography where we are looking at longitude and lat latitude uh, or Eastern time zone and the Western time zone. So Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere, you could have two teams uh, where the sun actually moves only between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. That's where the, uh, the radar actually can move only between that. If the radar moves beyond that, you can actually have points depending on how you want to do it. So whichever, whichever long lad they actually get, uh, they get caught, you could actually uh, define the points. So you can do it like a northern hemisphere versus southern hemisphere or east time zone versus western time zone. So, so you understand the concepts of prime meridian, understand the concepts of longitude, latitude, topic of cancer, Capricorn, and all of that. So you understand uh, uh, this quite well. Uh, another example for mathematics, value of pi. Uh, so children should know why is the value of pi 22 by 7 and not anything else. Uh, so essentially, when you're looking at circumference by diameter, it's always 22 by 7 for any circle, uh, which is a constant. So uh, when you take them to the ground, start measuring. One, they learn how to draw circles on a ground. 
uh, using a rope and a chalk or whatever. Or if there is if there already some marking, they also learn how to measure the uh, circumference. Probably using rope, which is a non-standard uh, thing, but uh, you basically you uh, lay the rope and uh, so different children can actually do it and you average it out. The concept of value of pi, you can do it whether it is on a football ground, basketball ground, wrestling mat, uh, wherever you learn the concept of pi. Uh, so essentially the idea is that can we actually generate a lot of ideas from children in terms of usage of equipment and new games. Uh, I just did uh, some uh, exercises in Chandigarh uh, day for yesterday and and we shot uh, some uh, videos also. Children actually come up with beautiful ideas in terms of how they want to play with shapes and yeah, all these are uh, uh, geometrical shapes and you can see that the patterns and the stuff that they do, someone has created tunnels, someone actually putting uh, pen and uh, 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 paper, scissors and stone. So you can, uh, someone has actually created uh, very beautiful structures. Simple game of Pac-Man, uh, instead of it on a computer you get children to do it on the ground you have stuff lying all around and uh, so you slowly have more and more monsters actually chasing a single child you can play it on the ground why why should you play it on a uh, on a computer uh, give new names to existing games like rumal chori could be dog and the bone it could be bring back the sun you can actually have solar system taught uh, through dog and the bone very simple you can do it by height you can do it by the name of the planet you can do it by colors and all of that Sports based crossword puzzles where you can actually have uh, spelling mistakes also. Uh, with the crossword, they understand about uh, the language and about the basic. What's very important is at the end of every session, uh, when we do it on the ground, when the mathematics teacher, or the science teacher, or English or Hindi teacher, they teach you on the ground, you also understand, you also need to tell them what is it that they learned at the end of each session. You should learn about the rules of the sports, that's important. Should learn about the curriculum alignment. As an example, here is an example of force and pressure, Oppo uh, opposite forces, equal forces, unequal forces. So you need to you need to discuss about both curriculum alignment, and also the sports side of things. Uh, social skills are important. They also learn to express themselves when they are on the ground. They are very free to express themselves. Uh, what is essential is the principles of learning has to be uh, need to have learning and educational objectives. It needs to be with guided discovery. So essentially, uh, it's the same game of hopscotch. You can actually do it uh, uh, differently for different subjects. Uh, what is also important is that uh, when you are giving them rating, you just need to have them very simple descriptors like not yet, getting there, got it, and wow. So that's a very simple thing. Uh, it's nothing about rating anyone. It's basically about someone is a learner and someone is still learning and someone has actually learned it. Four basic constraints which are there in sports are it's called step, space, time, equipment, and people. Typically, they're not enough P, P periods, but if, if the classes, class teacher, the subject teacher go out and do it on the ground, the uh, children will anyway get their physical education or uh, physical education time, which is 60 minutes. Uh, they can do it. Classes will become interesting. It's all about smiles, basically about make sure that it's safe, it's uh, maximum participation, it's inclusive. Uh, it's learning uh, and there is enjoyment. Of course, uh, if the goals are uh, met, then it's a lot of success. So, uh, so this is a shortest distance between people. Smile is a shortest distance. Typically for uh, teachers, what you need to do is to have continuous professional development, uh, teaching them how to learn uh, differently and uh, learning how to teach creativity because it's all about creativity and how do you extend the teaching beyond the conventional classroom. So these are the uh, basic things which I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So. Thank you so much, Sujit, sir, for this brief uh, catch up with the, what uh, your organization is doing and how we can uh, introduce and inculcate um, sports in our uh, curriculum. And I was, what was crossing my mind was that while we are taking care of the curriculum in physics, chemistry, or Hindi, mathematics, and English, what are we doing about uh, the sports curriculum? Like whether the child has gained his uh, locomotor and uh, object control and body moving and kinesthetics. So are we measuring that also? Because that uh, the physical fitness also becomes a very important thing 
which you actually are uh, talking about here like in uh, when while we are measuring the uh, curriculum achievements uh, the learning achievements of the child in various subjects so to say are we also uh, able to do something for the sports also uh, through your program um, ma'am actually if you look at the learning outcomes so there are the four key outcomes first one is a uh, uh, whether the subject outcome whatever is a intended outcome for a particular subject whether that is met that's the first thing if from a subject teacher's point of view second is uh, whether the uh, whether that actually leads to improvement in fitness uh, third is if if we are playing a particular sport so let's say that we are playing football so are we actually uh, whatever is the intended level for that particular child in football are we able to meet that sports outcome and the fourth one is the life skills life skills are the social emotional skills that you are looking at so are we also improving on the life skills so these are the four key learning outcomes so whenever we are doing any activity uh, we need to uh, we need to look at it uh, ma'am actually activity is just one aspect the second aspect is basically about when you are looking at let's an assessment so in case of assessment also we can actually introduce whether it is a objective type whether it is a subjective question so whether it's a hot question so we can actually so as an example uh, uh, value of pi uh, children depending on whether you take them to a wrestling hall or to a boxing ring so when i'm looking at a perimeter in an area if i taking to a boxing uh, ring i need to tell them that if you have uh, if you have to build a ring and you have rope how much so what is a what is a uh, how much rope do you need in terms of the length so they actually get to learn the uh, dimension of the boxing ring uh, whether through internet whether through uh, whether through actual inspection uh, so that is one outcome so that that's one key outcome second thing is they anyway get to learn uh, what is what is the measurement of that thing so that way it becomes very interesting and uh, like yesterday day for yesterday we are gone to kendri vidyalaya to chandigarh chandi mandir uh, we are doing some shoots so we ask children to so we are teaching about plane surface and uh, curved surface we ask children that can you just go and uh, touch uh, the surfaces which are curved surfaces they, uh, there was an open gym and different children actually touch different uh, different equipments they actually could get a feel of what is a curved surface and what is a plain surface when they look at it on the ground also it was a new basketball uh, court so we asking that uh, how much pain do you think is required if you have to paint this basketball ring uh, one is a actual basketball i mentioned and also the outer area the field of play as well as the outer this thing so uh, and uh, say they didn't have equipment they actually used a tennis uh, uh, the tennis uh, net to actually do the measurement because the size of the net had uh, particular dimensions basically 9 cm by 9 cm when you actually put it on blocks so you understand all those concepts by doing it on the ground different children will do it differently uh, you are learning exactly the same thing uh, but you have both learning outcomes met which is a uh, perimeter area as well as uh, yes we have to see to it that the learning outcomes of the subject that concept concept attainment for the subject as well as uh, the sports is taken care of i would request anyone else uh, would like to come in and ask uh, sir their queries uh, hi i just want to open that uh, what fitness 365 is uh, about if you can just uh, explore about this topic Uh, sir, actually, uh, so I, I I head the organization called Fitness Three Six Five. That's a core fitness and sports. So we actually run the structured PE and uh, sports uh, program in schools. Uh, we also run the Kelo India Fitness Assessment Program, the Fit India uh, Fit India app, and uh, uh, the school certification that you are looking at. Those are all been designed by us. So essentially, uh, essentially, uh, so we as an organization which specializes on sports education and sports technology. So, do you provide the coaches, or it just? I think we provide, we provide everything. So there are three parts. We call it as aim for good fitness, assessment, intervention, and monitoring. So we uh, do assessment of fitness and sports to twice a year. Intervention is basically we pro- we have a curriculum for nursery to twelve. We also have uh, we also provide P teachers and coaches, and uh, so we also have a platform through which all the children and parents and the school can actually monitor. Uh, the progress of each and every class that's happening. If a teacher is taking uh, whether it's a sports-oriented class or a subject-oriented class, whatever is happening, 
the teacher can actually mark each of the child how they are doing like the grading that i talked about basic simple things whether the child is still learning whether they learned whatever because we don't want to uh, we don't want to rank children but we just want them to learn so that's the idea and children can also say uh, how was the class so that's automatic feedback about the teacher so so it's a platform which has analytics it also has so yeah thank you thank you so much sir anyone else anita ma'am yes i want to ask uh, as you said it is uh, not only measurement of uh, their fitness but as you have shown that uh, physics lesson is integrated with sports or uh, chemistry lesson is integrated with sports history lesson so would you have some demonstrations of such lessons with physics teachers chemistry teachers or history yes, teachers yes we, we have ma'am uh, we have so in fact uh, we have shot some uh, this thing uh the i can also with the uh, uh whenever there is time i can actually show some videos also of uh, lessons which have been integrated we have shot it in fact on the ground where uh, uh, uh whether it is a area area and perimeter whether it is a phosphory flop that we just talked about uh, where uh, we are talking about center of mass uh, how does center of mass impact performance in boxing and how can you change your style to so we i have videos uh, to do that actual uh, actual lesson so if we can uh, you can share at least not of course all but one or two such videos with a group so that everyone knows it how they are and how we can integrate in this sure ma'am i mean uh, of course i mean whenever uh, you want to show i can i i show it also no problem So uh, I can share it in the group. I mean, I can show it now also, but I think it's better to. Yes, uh, yeah, because it. Uh, I think time may not permit yeah, it. Yeah. Hmm? So, so a lot of this. I mean, whether, ma'am, as an example, Newton's third law of motion, which basically talks about an action has equal but opposite reaction. Uh, so he, there, the concept is about equal forces. It's about unequal forces, resultant force, which is a higher force minus a lower force. So we can actually do that through a game of tug of war and also through wrestling. So here, children understand what does opposing force mean. I mean, whether it is you are pushing it to the other side or you basically in tug of war you actually fall on the uh, you you fall right. Whereas in case of uh, uh, wrestling, you push. So the concept of push and pull, you actually do it through force, and that's something uh, children can actually understand. Uh, so right. now uh, there are two aspects that I teach. Uh, for example, I teach velocity acceleration by throwing a ball. Hmm? so here i am teaching physics or i am teaching them sports uh, ma'am actually or of course you are integrating both yeah. but the ultimately we want our children to know physics also and we want them to of course enjoy sports right ma'am ma'am i can i can give you an example like uh, uh, so let's take an example simple thing like a uh, uh, so there ma'am actually when you are on the ground uh, like when i am doing electricity and circuit i actually uh, after this thing i'll share a video also so that you can see also so when i'm actually doing a 4 into 10 4 into 100 uh, relay race children are actually learning that to compete want to win so that's that's what they do but we tell them that today we are going to learn about uh, today we are going to learn about electricity and circuit so what all do you need for electricity and circuit so children day for yesterday video i'm just talking about so the, some children said that you need a you need a wire you need current you need battery someone said that they need a bulb and uh, they said they need a switch so i when i talk to them saying that do you actually need bulb for electricity you don't need a bulb for electricity it is because of electricity that you actually uh, you start a bulb instead of bulb you can have a fridge or a television also so that's a discussion that they have but we tell them that like let's do one thing before we uh, before we learn about all the concepts let's have a 4 into 4 into 100 relay race they do a 4 into 100 relay race Once they have completed the race, we know that who are one, two, three, four, five, six. They also understand. They start talking. Why did someone win? Someone did not win. Uh, then you talk to them about uh, that. What happened when you actually cross the hurdle? Uh, they say that the speed actually uh, went down. So then you explain that the current actually flows uh, when it goes through registers. Then the uh, then the flow of current actually uh, is uh, less. So they understand the concept of that. Uh, then uh, uh, then uh, no one talked about the no one talked about the baton no one talked about the electron we told them that you missed out on something that what did you pass they said that we passed the baton 
then you then you talk to them that you actually pass the electron from uh, from the first uh, from the beginning to the end so that's how they learn about the concept of, but actually played a 4 into 100 they actually tried their best to win the this thing so when they are doing a particular so when i'm actually doing tug of war i want to win i'm not i'm not talking about physics at that point of time it's before that and after that is when i'm talking about physics right so uh, so so yeah. when he, so as an example when we did tug of war uh, it was on grass uh, we said that if you actually had to do it in the indoor hall which is a very beautiful hall what would have happened we said that we would have slipped am gir jate so then you tell them that you actually use friction as an opposing force to to as for your own advantage so how do you use friction for your own advantage you actually learn it on the ground but when you are doing tug of war you are doing a tug of war similarly when you are doing wrestling you say that you are using a shoulder to push each other and you push yourself down so then you are playing you are doing wrestling you are not doing anything else so uh, so that's uh, that is how you do it when you are doing high jump you are saying that you are using let's say linear velocity into a circular motion linear motion to a circular motion uh, because that is how you actually get so this you can always do after that because they can appreciate it better uh, yeah so we got the children to actually start doing high jump most of them they try to jump the face down because uh, that is how and we had one student who was already good in phosphory and he could actually jump a much higher this thing the video which is there which uh, when i show you you will see that um, how uh, how uh, physics actually helps in doing that absolutely uh, thank you so much mr panigrahi my last uh, query uh, if we can have the details the uh, uh, schedule that uh, that you follow for the entire academic session and uh, the details of those sessions how do you provide coaches also everything so is there if there is any literature would really sure. like to go through sure. it sure ma'am ma'am the idea is that there are two things one is that uh, like uh, uh, one is a physical education teacher who is actually teaching games so one is to sensitize the pe teacher as in ki wo aur kya seekh sakta because sometimes actually unko pata nahi hota karata to hai unko pata nahi hota hai ki did they apply anything of this that's one situation second thing for subject teachers point of view Uh, to remove that fear ki hum integrate nahi kar sakte as an example civics as an example people find it very difficult to integrate this is separation of power separation power is a uh, where uh, it's uh, we say that a legislature ex- executive and judiciary may separate kaise kare power in sports it is always there so you have a selector you have the selection team you have the players who are playing and then you have the umpire who is a who is a judiciary so it's already there it's about it's about visualizing what could be the uh, this thing uh, so idea is that kisi ko template dene ki zarurat nahi so they can people teachers can actually create the sensitizing them training them at yeah. least they start yeah. thinking the thought process yeah, becomes the idea is to remove that fear yeah. that is important it's not really about uh, because there are hundreds of ways of doing the same thing so absolutely uh, there's no so need it's a, i think it is a good a good time to oh, sorry Thank you so much, Sujit sir. Uh, till Rupa ma'am takes care. So um, I just wish to tell everyone that um, I was having a discussion with sir, and he said that uh, they he also holds uh, subject wise curriculum development yes. lesson plan yes. development programs where um, does the science teachers together can write a um, uh, lesson plan on a particular uh, plan for a, a particular topic, and then they come together and decide on what sport to take uh, take take this particular lesson uh, with. is am i right sir no. ma'am the idea is that like i showed you some examples but yes, after sir, that the idea is that if there are see there are hundreds of teachers ma'am there ma'am let's say uh, if there are hundred teachers uh, uh, i think the collective uh, intelligence of hundred teachers will be much more than just two or three or four people right so it's like i can say that uh, i can say i can give you let's say 50 examples but 50 examples not then i think all the teachers are so good i think unless the teachers themselves are involved in making yeah, yeah, the plans they won't be able to carry forward thank absolutely. you so much absolutely. rupa ma'am was saying that. something yes rupa, i was just saying the same thing ma'am you just snatched the words from my mouth we'll have a sorry uh, that is the subject alike uh, workshops for uh, science we'll have it uh, also for english 
uh, for mathematics so that you know uh, you are able to dedicate and we will just take 50 teachers so i request everybody you know to be uh, after we finish the exams we could do this sir and thank you so much i mean i know ritu ma'am had raised her hand uh, so if you have a quick question otherwise um, my query has been solved, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> thank you. So, sir, thank you very much. And thank we will so much, bring a lot of workshops with you because I think it's time for me. Uh, it is very, very important personally because I'm a national level hockey player. I've been. So, for me, I think it is absolutely imperative because true characters are made on the play field, according to me, because of the sports. So, we would want you to be here much more often, sir, with right. the teachers and we'll arrange for that charu ma'am will definitely uh, be in touch with you thank you very much thank you so much ma'am. pleasure thank, thank you, you so much